Hey folks, I want to talk to you about something special today. Uh, I want to <clears throat> give this quote right off the bat. Boxing was something else. It was my life. I went to over 500 fights. I went early. I went where I knew fighters would be and got autographs. Boxing was something else. It was my life. That quote was from Scrapbook Boxing. And all, everybody should go there. Everybody. Um, This man is third generation special. And I'm sure soon we're going to have the fourth generation special. Because I know that torch will continue to shine. Someone else will be holding that torch. I'm convinced of it. Over at Scrapbook Boxing, I want to say another quote uh, that, that he gave. And I'm going to have to paraphrase this one more. Uh, you young guys cherish the championship fights you get to see and other fights you get to see. And especially the ones that if you get fortunate enough to go to see. Cherish it. Cherish your generation. Because you only, you only got the, the, the availability to see it the first time when it happens. When it happens or very close to it when it happens. So the young people should cherish that. Uh, your generation is going to be, and especially if the, 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 the decline and the vigor and the aggression of the sport keeps waning, uh, you're going to have something else to tell these young kids. And that's how it happens, as in the book of Ecclesiastes says in the Holy Scripture, uh, there's nothing new under the sun, folks. There's nothing new under the sun. So you younger folks, uh, be apprised. You're going to be doing what us older folks are doing now. You're going to be, wow, boxing was something else in my day. That. That, that quote, what he said over at Scrapbook Boxing, and everyone just type in on YouTube, Scrapbook Boxing, go over there. It is a lot of history to ingest over there. Scroll through his list. Look at a guy you like. Look at a guy that's one, one of or your favorites. And go check it out and listen to the conversation. You'll be happy you did. See, sitting there and watching a fight, and watching, you know, your old, your, for example, your favorite fighter is uh, Sugar Ray Lynn, let's say, from, your, from the past. And uh, young fella, you go over there and you look, you find something where he's got Sugar Ray Leonard mentioned in the title of the video, you go sit, do a look, see, and a listen. You're going to hear a story. You're going to hear something real. You're going to hear, you'll hear some things, and I just picked his name out of the hat, but it's this way with everyone. All of them. 
in most cases, uh, these stories have personal stories that he or his dad or his granddaddy had. This is some special stuff going on here. Special stuff. I don't dare out of grand respect. Uh, I may take a... Uh, uh, we've got a couple of Mike Tyson videos on here, for example, that are just general videos. Hundreds of people have these videos of a certain fight. Uh, we may download those and re-upload re those, but it's because hundreds of people have them and uh, it's public. There's no copyright on this stuff. Uh, I wouldn't dare, but I want to, uh, but not to put online, but to keep for my personal pleasure, and Joe does too. Uh that we would just have everything, all the information, but I would, you can't dare go copy somebody like that. That's personal information. That's copyrighted by generational life. Reason why I'm saying this is, is that Uh, if any channel went down on YouTube, the most crushing blow would be to me, and Joe would be if his, if that channel went down. If he, uh, of course, I know he'll never do this for the, and you want to know why? Uh, because he loves this sport, his heart's in it. His dad's heart was in it. His grandpa's heart was in it. Going back to the turn of the century, folks, their hearts have been in it. I have that same generational thing. Of course, it's not as extensive. And we living in the South, we didn't get to go see but so lucky they were because they were in New York City. They got to go to Madison Square Garden and the polo grounds and other venues around where they got to see these fights. And the wonderful, wonderful stories, uh, wonderful personal stories, things you won't hear about. Mike Tyson, for example. Things you just you would you simply won't hear. You can't get that information anywhere else because nobody has that information. See? <laughs> oh, how special, special scrapbook boxing the channel is for all people that. Love boxing. Oh, so special. Uh, you get to, for example, hear stories about uh, Black Murderers Row. And uh, go check that out, young boxer, if you don't know who those guys were. You get to hear the, uh, the heartache and the struggles and the... Uh, uh, and just everything that these guys went through. And many of them, uh, the stories are told uh, from someone who had knew and met or hung around with them or went to the same places and socialized together. Amazing. Simply amazing. The greatest supposed boxing historian of all time whom I don't want to be a fin finful to because I believe he just passed away, Burt Sugar. Uh, here's what Burt Sugar can give us. Here's what scrapbook boxing can give us. And I apologize, y'all know my hand shakes for a reason. Uh, 
So it's the best place in the world to go because there is nowhere else to go now for that kind of history. Nowhere else you can go to hear these personal stories of like, uh, there are stories on so many fighters where they hung out on 33rd Street down in the Bronx or, uh, you know, this one hung out on 22nd Street in Harlem at uh, Chanda's Chinese restaurant, just as examples. And they they ate this there, and they talked to us, and uh, they always gave autographs, and they did a really sweet thing for this kid. I mean, just stories that are real, real. Uh, my dad, uh, and I believe it would have been from his oldest brother, my uncle Joe. Uh, of course, you know, Joe's named after his, my daddy's daddy, Joe Allen, and Joe's great uncle Joe, my uncle Joe, was named after him as well. And uh, I believe I remember my dad saying, hey, that's, that's your uncle Joe's. And I saw a video on Harry Greb and... Uh, Go look Harry Greb up. Interesting. Interesting. Heartbreaking. Uh, heartfelt. Really. Heartfelt to real men. Uh, go, go on Scrapbook Box and look up Harry Greb. And there are countless others. Countless others. It's just you get a fighter that... And this wonderful thing about this channel, too, you go and uh, you, you hear something about one, one particular fighter, and you'll gravitate towards that fighter. It could be Henry Armstrong. It could be Harry Gray. Uh, it could be Jack Johnson. It could be Rocky Marciano. A whole host of people. It could be Mike Tyson. Uh, everybody. But back to my little personal little story with uh, scrapbook boxing. I was a very little boy. And we were visiting Grandma Allen's house. And uh, when I tell these stories, it's so hard for me not to cry. Uh, even as an old man. Uh, uh, I think the older I get, the more sentimental I get. So we, uh, me and my daddy were up in my grandmother's attic and we're just looking around for some things. Uh, may, we may have been up there cleaning up my grandmother's attic. Uh, my grandmother's attic was a walk-up attic. It was really a second floor, uh, two rooms that she didn't use. Uh, after the kids were grown and gone, but we called it the attic. Uh, but it, you know, it was a walk up. You had a big flight of steps that. It's one of those houses you walk in the front door, you open it, and you're treated to a big stairway going up. And uh, years later, I, uh, the house was. The construction was started on it by my grandpa in 1910. And it was finished in late 1911. It's a historic house now. Uh, but when I was a little boy, I'd go to that house and I thought, oh my gosh, this is the biggest place in the world to be in. This place is so huge. Uh, me and my wife, uh, about 16 years ago, were doing some work on her U.S. visa. We were living in the U.S. at the time, and uh, we had to go to Charlotte, and uh, uh, that, ha that big house has been turned into a children's daycare center. 
They're beautiful. They've kept it up really nice and beautiful. Uh, it wasn't open, but the lady that owns it, uh, or the, yeah, I believe she's the lady that owned it. She wasn't the lady, and she runs it, I would suppose. But I pulled up in there and uh, I told her, I said, my granddaddy built this house. And she, and she immediately, she said, come in and look at it. And it was so small to me com compared. So uh, things are so different. <laughs> uh, but with me and my dad, we were up in the attic and uh, there, there was a photo. And I know I, re I, know I remember this correctly. Um had two guys in it and I distinctly, distinctly uh, remember the guy with Harry Greb more than I remember Harry Greb. The background, uh, their training I suppose in possibly in New York uh, at, or they're in a big city, New York uh, Pittsburgh, which was, was big to me, and, or Philadelphia, or somewhere like that. So, we got some background noise. First time I've heard big background noise like this. So, anyway, uh, we found that picture and uh, I don't believe they were even able to pull photos off of film back then at all. I don't think that capability came about till later, and I'm probably terribly mistaken on that. But uh, I, I looked at my dad and I said, "I want to be like that guy." <laughs> And my dad said, no, you don't. You want to be like this guy. <laughs> he was pointing to Harry Graham. He said, if you like this guy, you're going to be a good, tough guy. You know, you're going, you, will, you will be the man. You will be great. Uh, but you won't be like this guy. He was pointing to Harry Graham. And I was pointing to the other guy whom I truly believe in, in my memory. Uh was who I got the answer to last night, which was uh, uh, Jim uh, uh, Jack O'Brien, former, uh, and maybe it's Jim O'Brien. See, my memory with names is not that good, uh, but my long-term memory is great. But I didn't know who the guy was with Harry Grip. Uh, from the photo, and that's who I wanted to be like, because the guy was bigger, you know. But it turns out he was a former light heavyweight champion. And uh, I posted to uh, Scrapbook Boxing, and it, as soon as he saw that, I got an answer back. Another gentleman said he thought it was uh, Fireman Jim Flynn. So I went and started looking at Jim Flynn and I kind of almost immediately thought, although the pictures would do some great, great film, but the pictures weren't really clear, but it was clear enough where I could say, no, nah, I don't think this was firing in Jim Flynn. But I got to revisit a match <laughs> where you want to talk about cheating, you should go watch uh, Jack Johnson versus Jim Flynn. I tell you, I tell you, that Jim Flynn guy, he was doing everything he could to try to compete against Jack Johnson. It wasn't working, but uh, go watch. Uh, I want you to do two things. Uh, if you don't do anything else, uh, go watch, 
go subscribe to Scrapbook Box, and then at your leisure, go look through his vast list of videos and their conversations, and get a look see and uh, uh, at your convenience go to go back and look when you got time. And look up in the names of these things and find one or two or ten of your favorite fighters. And you'll get hooked. Trust me, you'll get hooked. Because once you start learning about something, you you know, you'll hear, well, the, I'm learning about guy A, he's fought guy B. And then like, you, you're going to want to know about, after you learn about fighter A, you're going to want to know some things about fighter B. And it just goes. And this, this is like an encyclopedia here. You know, it's like the big encyclopedia Britannica sets or Compton encyclopedia sets. And you just, you know, one volume's A, one's B. You go look up your fighter's name and get a boatload of information. And uh, there's diff there's going to be multiple different videos uh, with your fighter's name the name of the guy you're looking for up there and because uh, uh, they're mentioned in different videos when they're fighting different guys and whatnot and this is under a conversational type form with this so you'll love it you'll love it uh, so I want you to go and subscribe to scrapbook boxing and hellfire, I just forgot the second thing I was going to ask you to do. I just forgot it. Uh, oh, the second thing I was going to ask you to do is go and uh, look at uh, the video with Fireman Jim Flynn, Jim Flynn fighting uh, Jack Johnson because if, if you want to see every cheating tactic that's ever been applied you go watch that fight and you see a little guy doing these things to a big strong guy and it's just simply amazing I, I use my Tyson Fury cup and slash Andre the Giant cup here because my hands will get to shaking and this cup we fill up, my wife fills up to about right here and I can use this cup without spilling everything all over the place. So I just thought I'd mention those stories. And uh, thanks to everyone. We put a little, just a little piece and a little snippet out of, out on Joe doing uh, just a little bitty circuit, uh, and he it, it might have been eight burpees in total in in the set. You know, it wasn't nothing major. <clears throat> Something things we've been doing, but uh, nothing quick or fast or really. Uh, exerting but we put the video up on uh, Twitter and YouTube here and on Facebook and we got a lot of a lot of good comments on that I, I really you know it was really a walk through thing for Joe and I thought I don't think people are gonna like us too much son because we're not getting on it here and uh People are like, uh, that, wow, you know. So I wanted to let folks know if you watch that video, it's just a little piece. And the first time we did those series of calisthenics and in t together like that, and we just did a little thing. Uh, Joe's working out back to doing two a days right now he feels well better doing that and uh, uh, we were on our evening work which it rotates you have the 
in the afternoon you have the hard one and then in the evening you have a more mild workout and then we switch that it's more mild in the afternoon and more extreme at night so and you're going to see Joe doing some dumbbell work if you watch that or if you have watched it and um uh Joe, we do we do dumbbell work uh, Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, and we just do with the lower weight that that he had there. So I don't want you young guys to get out here and start uh, power lifting and bodybuilding and thinking that that is going to help you because uh, we we. We know scientifically today that that will not help you in, in boxing. So, uh, help you in other things, other sports. Uh, but uh, in the boxing, uh, it's more than likely not the thing to do because it'll slow you down. And when you when when you get heavier muscle fibers growing and compounding that comes with uh, heavy weightlifting, it, uh, you have to have a lot more oxygen to feed that muscle. So uh, be careful. And if you see Joe, uh, when he's pulling back, he's, he's in a bent over position with his arms coming down here. And when he's pulling back, you may not want to bend over vertical like like Joe does. Most people, they're bowed up here. Uh, Joe goes down because he uh, just gets totally vertical because he feels it works his uh, shoulders and the pulling better. He's, in other words, he's trying to mimic a, uh, with those dumbbells, a push-up. You know, you do the push and you do the pull. And we are firm believers in uh, push and pull. So it's just some things we do. And uh, uh, anyway, he went through that little circuit. And people on the three venues that were on, well, were really on four, counting Instagram. But uh, everybody's been so nice and happy about that. But young guys, if you start doing that, you need to understand that that was a very easy thing. It was it's almost walking through these calisthenics, and uh, you got to do way better than that. You got to step that up, and the key is to uh, do all these things uh, quickly. Now, quickly, uh, the or the things that we did in this video, you got to keep good form, but. You need to go quickly. And, uh, we try to do things that last three minutes. So we three minutes of going on something, so you uh, and then you rest a minute. Three on, one off. Three on, one off. Three on, one off. So and maybe four on, one off. Uh, so that's what we try to do. But guys, I'd go watch. Uh, scrapbook boxing. I had my little story in there uh, from being a, I uh, must have been nine years old when we were up there in my grandmother Allen's attic and that saw that picture. And it was just a wonderful, amazing thing uh, that the, this wonderful gentleman at Scrapbook Boxing was able just to produce who that was very quickly. And he was able to produce that because he knew knows everything about all these trainers too. And of course, knowing that, he knows, well, this, this is him working with him. This is him working with him. But he's also done, done uh, uh, extensive historical conversations about uh, uh, the trainer. So you get the uh, the O'Brien, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, as a boxer and as a trainer. So you get the whole logist. You go down the line 
He's a great guy. You want the you know the thing I think I'm going to ask him next is who does he believe was the greatest trainer of all times? That's my next question for him. Uh, if you go over there, beat me to it and ask him, hey, who was the best trainer? Because I'll, I'll have a look see, but he'll get the question from me too. So blessings, blessings, blessings to everybody. Uh, learn your boxing history, young boxers. Learn your boxing history, old boxers. Learn your boxing history, everybody. And as Scrapbook Boxing said, cherish every moment of your generation's prize fights and contendership fights. Uh, watch them as when they happen or as close to as they can you know, within a day or so of them happening, as we can do today, uh, if you can't get to a fight or even if you can't get a pay-per-view, uh, watch these things in your time. Don't sit back because uh, you're watching another era if you wait years and years. So watch your era so you can tell others about your era. And tell others how well it was so blessings to everybody god bless my christian brothers and sisters and remember if the king of kings lord of lords general of generals comes a knocking at that door to your heart open that door open that door uh you won't get a perfect life god's not giving out the real god Jesus Christ is not giving out gold diamonds and Cadillacs as a reward for your faith. But I'll tell you what, you got a lot of treasure stored up in heaven. Uh, that's where your treasure will come. But he'll help you get through the trials and the tribulation that you have here. And he'll give you more of an inner peace than you've ever had. Uh, I'm not one that peddles junk here. Uh, and I am, won't dare lead somebody to worship mammon that they think that uh, Jesus is all about his existence is to give them something, uh, to be good and proud of them. Uh, that's just the wrong attitude to have. And, if you are a Christian and you've been having those attitudes, you've been in a church that keeps telling you God's going to give you all this back sevenfold or whatever while you're here on this earth, you had better think again. You had better start reading a Bible yourself. You had better start talking to the one true Jesus because there's a lot of false Jesuses floating up in the satanic spiritual airways that's talking to you and listening to you that is a false Christ. You need to get that straight in your heart. Uh, it's the biggest thing for young Christians to look at. But uh, I just wanted to give that warning out because we see this so much and we see that uh, uh, people worshiping a false Christ and it's very sad. Uh, you got to keep in mind, folks, Jesus didn't own a mule. He didn't even ha have his own bed to sleep in. Uh, many of these, uh, the apostles didn't have anything. Uh, what they had, they left and went to follow Jesus. So if they, if they gave up everything to follow Jesus, what, what in the world psychologically, other than greed and selfishness, and conceit and pride could exist in yourself to for you to so easily believe that uh, the all these apostles who were executed and had nothing and Christ as walking king on earth had nothing and gave himself up why he would God would just sit here and provide you with all these monetary things Start thinking, people. Just use your brains. 
Uh, God's already gave you between the ears everything you need. You just need to unblind yourself and not get woke. Uh, being woke is being blind. Be awakened and your life will get a lot better. Trust me on that. Been around a long time. Uh, know many things, know many more things that don't work than I do that do work. But that's one thing I know that does work. And uh, you get that knock at the door. Say, who's there? Make sure you know who's there. And if it's the true Jesus Christ, open that door and let the Lord of Lords in. And peace will come your way. Growth will come your way. And your faith will increase. And you'll know where you're going. You'll have no wonders there. So give it a shot, folks. I'm an old man. I know what I see. I know what I've saw in other people. I know, I know what work has worked, and I know I certainly know what doesn't work. So give it a shot. Much love to everybody. Check you later.